Hi there, thanks for joining me. In this video, we'll take a look at the impasto effect in Corel Painter. Impasto is this elevated paint texture that you get uh, when you're painting in Corel Painter, and it's a little tricky to work with because it exists kind of on its own layer, uh, in its own separate world, so you might be trying to do something like blend and be able to blend the color but not be able to blend the texture or you might have the opposite problem where you can only blend the texture but you can't blend the color this would be because uh, some of your brushes are maybe set to one of these settings here and it's the wrong setting so when you're working with impasto you always need to have the impasto palette open that's found in the window menu brush control panels impasto and each brush can be set to this draw to method here so draw to color just works with color. So I, if I'm working with a blender, I'm only blending the color. If I was using a acrylics brush here and I have it set to color and I paint, uh, I won't get any impasto effect. Now you can see the impasto that I put on on the other layer underneath still, but I'm just adding color. If I wanted to add new impasto, I would have to set it to either depth or color in depth and now you can see that I'm adding new impasto. Now what's happening here is every time you add impasto, that impasto is getting added to just a separate impasto layer. It's kind of just there invisibly. You can't really get to it and change it. All you can really do is either add to it or subtract from it or clear it. You can also hide it and reveal it up here. If you want to clear it, you can go to clear impasto but you have to be on the layer, the original layer that the impasto was on. So it gets a little confusing. What I recommend doing is just adding impasto last and add it on a separate layer if possible. So make a new layer, call it impasto, and then draw only with depth selected here. And then you'll just be drawing with just impasto and then you won't have to worry about really messing anything up. You can also quickly and easily turn it on and off much faster than it would be if you had to keep going up to this canvas menu. And it's really easy to manipulate. If you wanted to erase it, you could erase it. If you want to blend it, you can blend it. And then it's not really so hard to work with. The important thing to remember though is that this impasto is on its own. It exists on its own layer and you have to work with that layer specifically and the only way to interact with it is to be drawing to depth or color in depth here. So you always have to watch out for that. So again if I wanted to uh, make some impasto I can use this acrylics brush or I can use the impasto brushes. We could try this gloopy one here and add some gloopy impasto. you can see this impasto is on its own layer. And if we want to clear it, we go to canvas, clear impasto. Now there's still some of this color that we added here. It didn't clear that. So you could also just delete the layer. Uh, you can get some pretty cool effects uh, from brushes that don't normally have impasto settings. Like let's say one of these uh, chalk brushes here. Let's do real fat chalk. Let's take a pretty big brush, turn up our paper settings a little bit, and we'll see what we get normally. We get this, but if we turn on impasto and we go to depth and we draw, we get this very subtle texture. I'm going to turn up the depth here so we can really see this. And I'll have to zoom in a bit you to be able to see this. But you can see we can add impasto with any brush that we want, pretty much. I mean, there's probably some that don't work. I would guess that the watercolors initially probably don't work, but many of these other brushes do. You'll just have to experiment and try some out and see which ones work and which ones don't. But again, if you're having trouble with this impasto and you're using these impasto brushes, uh, pay attention to what's going on in this palette here. You want to make sure that you're using this intentionally. Otherwise, uh, you might not be able to really 
work with impasto or get it to blend or get it to do what you want it to do. Let's take a look at a few more impasto controls. Let's go to some of the impasto brushes and let's try this texturizer clear. And what this will do, depending on what size your brush is, is it will add this really cool lumpy texture, which could be really cool. You can of course change the depth to make your canvas stick up more or less. And I find, generally speaking, subtle is almost always better for these effects. Uh, we could really crank it up, but you can see it you know, almost goes too overboard here. If we want to clear this impasto, we can go to Canvas and Clear. Let's try another brush here in the impasto category. Let's do Fiber and make sure it's set to draw to depth. And you can see that we can add some really cool fiber texture. Makes it look like uh, some kind of woven material or fiberglass or something. Finally, we'll look at these last two settings here, smoothing and plow. And we'll use the thick round uh, impasto brush here. So what smoothing does is it controls how smooth your paint is. If we turn it all the way down, you can see we get a pretty crispy paint texture. And if we turn it all the way up, we get something a little smoother. I'll zoom into these so you can see. It's just the smoother it is, the less grain it's going to have, the less, uh, less dry it's going to look. Plow controls how much smudging is occurring using that brush. So if we turn our plow really low, it's not really going to smudge it much, but if we turn it way up, it's going to smudge it around a lot. Generally speaking, I don't really mess with these settings too much. I just kind of leave them as is for whichever brush I'm using. Um, I don't particularly use a whole lot of impasto while I'm painting because I find it just to kind of be more of a hassle to deal with while you're painting. So what I like to do is just add it afterwards when I'm done painting on its own separate layer and I'll just add it kind of where the painting needs it. I don't add impasto to every painting um, just like I don't add canvas texture to every painting. So it's kind of up to you whether you want to use it or not. I find that using a program like ArtRage works a lot better for impasto. So I tend to use ArtRage for impasto instead of Corel Painter. I hope this was helpful for all of you painter users. If you want to make it easier for other artists to find this information, take a quick second to share this video or like it on YouTube or Facebook. And thanks for watching. Stay tuned for my next video.